I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. For a free month's trial of Treehouse, head on over to teamtreehouse.com slash show. In this episode, we'll be talking about the CSS will change property, HTML forms, vertical aligning things, and more. Let's check it out. Well, this may come as a surprise to many of you, or none of you at all, but uh, the Trio Show is on its 100th episode, and we actually haven't won any awards at all. It comes as a surprise to me, literally every day, that I wake up and have not won an award. This is not an award-winning show, so <laughs> we decided to... Uh, to make our own award. We were thinking about best treehouse show, but we're not we're not really sure if that's that's true. So we gave ourselves a participation award. This is a lovely, lovely participation award. And and here it is. It's coming up. Nick, I, I also want to say that like the Treehouse Show would be nothing without its viewers and its listeners. You know, truly, this award belongs to you all. You're the wind beneath our wings. So first up, here is everything you need to know about the CSS will change property. This is over on the Opera development blog, and it goes into the will change property of CSS. Now, the will change property is something that is very, very interesting. The introduction sums it up pretty well. If you've ever noticed that flicker in WebKit-based browsers while performing certain CSS operations, then you've mostly, most likely come across the term hardware acceleration. Now, CSS transforms can be done on the GPU, which will do hardware acceleration on the graphics processing unit. Now, the CSS will change property tells the web browser to offload these different transformations onto the GPU. Now, there are a lot of different things that you need to take into account when working with the um, CSS will change attribute. Now, you might think, hey, if I'm just telling the browser that everything will change, this will result in a massive speed up of all of my rendering. And that is incorrect. In fact, there are a ton of do's and don'ts when using the will change property. In fact, the very first don't is do not, do not declare that everything will change because you can actually slow down and crash the browser. Uh, another do when using the will change property is give the browser enough time to work. What does that mean? Well, if you are telling the browser to offload the transition of transforming on an element's hover, the browser does not have enough time to do that because the attribute will be taken into account while the transition is happening. Instead, you can apply different parts of the will change attribute to different states of the element. So you can go from hover to active and telling it the transformation will occur when you hover over the element and then when it is active, that is when the transformation goes into effect. That's really cool. So when you actually use uh, the GPU or use some kind of property that uses the GPU, the browser actually has to create a separate compositing layer. Mm -hmm. And so using will change tells the browser to create that layer in advance so that it's just ready to go as soon as that change happens because that flickering you're seeing is the element being transferred over to that different compositing layer that's being rendered on the GPU. Exactly. So if you use way too many of those and just apply it to every element, it's going to create... It's like a party. A ton of layers. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when everything is important, nothing is important. Exactly. Very cool stuff. So next up is HTML5 forms validation. This is a really cool blog post. In fact, it's a, a three-part series about HTML5 web forms. In the first part, it covered the markup. Second part covered CSS. And this is about the constraint validation API. Now, if you're not familiar, you can actually do form validation in HTML5 forms without any kind of JavaScript. So you can use the invalid and required styles, and they'll be applied on page load. 
And if you don't, for example, want the form to validate, you can also use the no validate uh, property. There's a whole bunch of different stuff here. Not gonna really go into detail, but mostly just wanted to make you aware that all of this stuff exists and it's pretty cool. If you haven't uh, checked out HTML5 form validation, definitely be sure to look into it because it's starting to become a real usable thing pretty quickly. Sometimes I feel like you've given me the no validate property. Next up, we have a project called Bounce.js. Bounce.js lets you easily create CSS3 animations right in your web browser. Let's go ahead and check this out. So here we have a square on the screen. That is really not that dramatic. But what happens when we play this animation? Whoa, what Whoa, just happened? Whoa, nothing, because we have to select a component first. Now let's go ahead and select a preset. We're just going to spin. Look at that. You see that? Look at that. Look at that. That box is spinning. That's not really that impressive, is it? Huh? No, let's go ahead and add another component. We can spin, scale, rotate. What is going on on this website? And you can do all of those things at once by combining those components. What? Pretty amazing. Isn't it? Look at this. And now, um, so here we go. You can combine as many of these as you want to. And then, this is the best part of the website. You can click Export CSS. Whoa. It will generate all this for you and it saves you all the work of typing every single one of these things out. That is way too many CSSs. <laughs> yeah. It's like a CSS party. Wow. I want to be invited to the CSS party. Anyway, you can find a link to bounce.js in our show notes, which you can check out at youtube.com slash gotreehouse, or search for us in iTunes. We are The Treehouse Show. And don't forget to check us out for 30 free days at teamtreehouse.com slash show. It's an award-winning show now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thanks for participating, Nick and Jason. Next up is vertical aligning anything with just three lines of CSS. I can see you're staring at this. Do you, think, do you think it's solid gold? I just like the trophy. We should probably lock that up somewhere. Nah, it's probably fine. Yeah. I mean, I tweet my credit card number when I want to buy something, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's you how you do it. You just ask the internet to do it for you. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, next up is vertically aligning anything with just three lines of CSS. You may have tried to vertically align things in the past, and it can be pretty difficult to do. However, this is a fairly elegant solution. So to the element that you're trying to select, you just say position relative. The top is set to 50%, and then you set a translate Y transform to negative 50%, and that will vertically align the element. And something that was pointed out a little bit later on was that the element could look blurry because it could end up on a half pixel since you're telling it to translate in terms of percentages. So in order to mitigate that, you just say transform style preserve 3D, and it should actually be a little bit more crisp. But anyway, you can see what that looks like here. So here's some vertically aligned elements. There's a cat, and hey, let's go swimming. <laughs> Up here, you can also see how you might do this in SAS and use a, uh, use a mixin, or I should say extension, to actually include that into your code very easily. Oh, there's the mixin. That's what I was looking for. Very cool. That's it. Very nice. Time for the next link now. Next up, we have a project called dc.js. This is a dimensional charting JavaScript library, hence those initials. Now, if we take a look at the dc.js website, let's go ahead and jump straight to an example. Here is the NASDAQ 100 index for a whole lot of time. There are something like 30 years in here. And you might say, wow, I've seen all of these charts before. This is not very impressive. Why are you showing us this charting library? Well, because it is completely dynamic and there is a huge amount of data in this record set. There is something like 7,000 different items that this is going through and processing. And actually you can scroll inside of this little axis right here that shows all of the different years. You can scroll in and out. And not only is it changing the data, it is smoothly animating and transitioning everything. Now, 
if we look up here, it is, uh, okay, here we go, the last 27 years. This is 27 years of data. Now, we can take a look at the source code for that particular chart. You can see we are telling it what kind of chart we want. There are pie charts, bar charts, line charts, and bubble charts. Then it goes ahead and applies the markup and then loads the data. This, is, this data is being loaded from a CSV file, so it needs to be formatted. And it uses d3.js to apply different time formatting and parsing as well. Then it also allows you to cross-filter dimensions and groups using these very, very easy JavaScript reduce functions. I am joking about that. Those are not easy to write at all. It's actually a little bit complicated, but once you've been doing d3.js for a little while, this stuff becomes a lot easier. Anyway, this is a great charting library that allows you to do a lot of different things and do them very performantly. We're not gonna go through all of this, but make sure to check it out in the show notes. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is a couple of use cases for calc. This is actually a little bit of an older article from Chris Coyer on the CSS a tricks blog, but it's still very relevant and very cool stuff. So basically calc is a CSS function that allows you to natively do simple math. Now you might be wondering, hey, can't just CSS pre preprocessors like SAS or less actually take care of the calculations for me? Yeah. And hey, can't CSS or SAS preprocessors take care of these transformations for me? Calculations? Well, the answer is Yes and no. It can do some things, but no preprocessor will ever be able to do things that need to happen at render time. Not with that attitude. Such as mixing units. So right here, there's an example where calc is being used to mix a percentage unit with an M unit. So that's pretty cool. There's surprisingly good browser support. I'll let you read about that on your own. I want to scroll down here to the second example. I thought this was pretty nifty. You can actually use calc to say how many pixels you want something to be from the bottom right corner. That's actually somewhat difficult to pull off, but with calc, you can do it fairly easily. Another example is use case number four here. Showing math is easier to understand. I like this a lot because oftentimes, say for example, you're doing some column calculations or you're doing a responsive grid or something like that and you have these really messy percentages that require a lot of significant digits to avoid rounding errors. However, down here you can see that calc shows exactly what's happening with math. So it's just 100% divided by say 7 or 7 times 2 and so on. So you avoid any of these magic numbers in say this hypothetical seven column grid. So pretty cool stuff. Definitely be sure to check this one out and try using it in your own CSS. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about all we have time for. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cypher. Make sure to follow our participation trophy at Treehouse Show Participation Trophy. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. You can also search for us on iTunes. We are The Treehouse Show. Don't forget to rate us. And also don't forget for a 30-day free trial of Treehouse, head on over to teamtreehouse.com slash show. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week. Yeah, look at those talents. Beast. It's very talented. Do you think when it goes to a party, it gets to beak the ice? We're really getting along well, you know, birds of a feather. Hmm. What kind of bottled water do you think it drinks? Avian? I hope I didn't give you claws for alarm there. These are getting worse and worse. <laughs>